I'm Cheryl Burke, and you probably know me from a little dance show called Dancing with the Stars. What you don't know is that I have been in and out of therapy for basically my entire life. I've been sober for three years now, and I have an amazing new obsession that I use to help process my feelings, diamond painting. And I wanna share my new obsession with my celebrity friends while trading stories you've never heard before. This is Diving Deep. I am Jack Osborne. My family life growing up was pretty, uh, pretty wild, pretty inconsistent, but a lot of fun. I've been famous for, uh, I guess, most, most commonly known to the Osbournes, and then did a bunch of TV shows in England, and I got a show right now called Portals to Hell on Travel Channel. Guess what I got you? What a we custom get? made, <gasps> not really custom, but it's Yoda. It's baby Grogu. That's what my dog looks like, and that's what I looked like when I was two with the ears. Oh, yeah. Yeah, remember? Remember these big oh, things? Oh, yeah, those things. <laughs> Who needs aerial silks when you got those? You Who's fly. got it? Who needs a plane, right? Do you remember yeah, how to do this thing? I do remember. And then I started doing more, and I finished like two or three more. My kids got into it. My fiance got into it. COVID was a dark time. So why do you think it's diamond painting so addicting? Um, I think it's addictive. Because we're an addict. <laughs> we're well, addicts. Because I, I think you can kind of go on autopilot with it. Yes. And I like that. And I compare it to Legos. I have heard interviews that you've said this. Yeah. I don't understand. Well, have you what? say more? It's, Legos. Well, it's it's a similar thing. You kind of zone out. There's instructions. You just kind There's of follow. There's no instructions. Yeah, but there is. You have to follow the. Can pattern. you listen to Audible or yes. do an online course while Legoing? Yes. Hundred huh. percent. Okay. Yeah, I do. I've done a lot of books. I've you done a lot of podcasts. Do a Lego show. I could do a Lego show. Let's just get right into it, Jack. Yeah, let's get to it. You're getting divorced. <laughs> <laughs> no, no I, I'm sorry, because listen. No, you're right. It sucks. Divorce sucks, and it Tell doesn't matter. Tell me about yours. Uh, well, I just be, do like, the nature. Without being. Yeah, with the nature of, you know, the legalities, I can't go into too much, but Obviously. I'll tell you from my experience, yeah. it was the hardest thing I've ever had to endure in my adult life. Why do you think that is? <sighs> because. Is there shame behind it? Um, well, there's, there's, I think there's so many feelings behind it. There's shame. There's uh, the sense of feeling failure. Yeah. Um, but you're also grieving the loss. It's yeah. still you're losing an entity at that point because together you you know you've well, yeah. you're you're a you're one. a one thing. Right. And there's houses or what's supposed and there's, to be. Yeah. yeah. And it's um. Did you and, say there's houses? Well, there's well yeah there's property. a house. Well, yeah. it's property. You do, everyone always thinks oh you're gonna come away like singing no. you know clicking your heels off into the sunset and divorce. Well, you get half, you know, in a in a good in a good case you get half of what you had. Right. Or not. Or not. Or you walk away both with each of what you came with. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, like I said, one of the toughest things I've ever had to endure. And it was not, uh, you know, I I have no long-term ill will towards my ex. No. I still see her. But you're talking about per for personal experience. Yeah. Like, I've chosen to... So when you say, like, the darkest depression that you may have ever felt, how do you define depression? How do you know when you're depressed? Oh, for me, it was pretty obvious. It was like, you know. Is that your could... first time feeling? No, depressed? no. I'd suffered from depression. After we did Dancing with <laughs> the The come down. Um, the come down. Um, of Cheryl barking at you. Just yelling at me for weeks and weeks on end. <laughs> uh, I just, I, I was like almost, I don't want to say bedridden, but like I had no motivation to want to do anything. And I was just right. in like a, in like a weird state of like sadness. For All how long? The... It took a long time. It took, it, it took, you know, it took a long time to kind of get back to I don't want to say myself because I you 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 de yeah you evolved. evolve you evolve yeah. through through a uh, divorce or separation or whatever because you have right. to rediscover okay I knew who I was when I was 25 and single right. before meeting you know my kid's mom mm -hmm. and but I didn't know who I was you know at 32 with right. three kids and I was like whoa did you ever feel stagnant towards that the end of no, it actually, no, I didn't necessarily feel stagnant in, in my relationship. Did it, it just, empower you in a weird way? Did you like love yourself more for, um, did you have compassion and empathy for yourself? Um, I, I wasn't in that mindset. Mm. I think that's a, you have to be very cognizant of yourself. Like you're just surviving. Yourself. Yes. Yeah. It was very Fight much, yeah. And I was just trying, for me, having kids, my whole focus was do whatever I got to do to make them okay. It was hard, but it was also, it was really, it was an obvious, like, hey, you've got three kids. Right. You, you're Shower. slip brain for their mom. Yeah. It's like, you know, having, getting three kids. And I had a, I, when, I, when I separated from my kid's mom, I, um, Minnie was three months old. So I had. Oh, wow, that's a newborn. Yeah, so I had, a, I was like alone with a newborn. And so it was just, it was really. That's hard. It was hard. 
but I'm I'm grateful. I'm not like I know. I don't have kids still. But you kind of do. You've had uh, what thirty uh, dance partners. That's Correct. kind of like having kids. Did you ever want to drink again? No, it never. I never felt like drinking would have been the solution. Once again, because of the kids. Right. But it, it went. It was more like. I, w I had the serious case of like the fuck it's it was I wouldn't say I think right. saying the suicidal it. but it no. was it was more like fuck it yeah what's the point in any of this mm. but then two days later you know because the way the custody schedule is you know they would the kids would turn up at my house and be like okay well I've got to take care of these kids I got to feed them I got to get them right. ready for bed I got to get up in the morning for school I got to do yeah. all this stuff and so it really it focused uh it gave me enough focus if it weren't for the kids do you think you would have Relapsed? No, I, I don't necessarily think relapse. Is the right word. It, for, no, I just don't. I don't. Listen. Have I, you in, ever thought of relapsing ever in your 19 yes, year, 19 yes, years? Yes, but never over something bad. It's always been over something good. Like making the final of Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, well, I'm well, kidding. Well, no, but here's the thing. When we were on that plane flying to yeah. New York and everyone's getting Hammered. fucked up. And I'm like, oh, it'd be great to Renbury, celebrate. Yeah. So basically, it's just going to get worse. <laughs> no, it's it's actually the only the only thing that I will ever say is that, and I'm sure, and it's it's the most cliche trope. Time is. Time will tell. T well, no, it's not even time will tell. Time will make it okay. Heal. Not necessarily heal, because you never do heal. <laughs> it's just you just need time. Time away from it lets things kind of chill. You'll find your new equilibrium. You'll find, okay, who is, who is Cheryl? Eckhart Tolle says, we are one. We are consciousness, pure consciousness. Don't know what that is. This is really deep talk. But, um, <laughs> you know, I must say, though, even prior to my split, um, I have done a lot. I'm very curious about, like, mental health, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, trauma and healing trauma. But I'm, there's a very fine line for me of like running away from the feeling and like saying that I'm feeling my feelings. And then there's the actual feeling of the feelings. Mm -hmm. I think I'm like, do you ever like feel like this where you're cautiously feeling your feelings? You know, I'm I'm not one of these overly f I feels. I know, either I, am I. I'm pretty, I'm pretty <laughs> shut off. Right. But um, you must know because you label depression depression. Yeah, yeah, I'm aware of I'm aware of that, uh, and I'm very much aware of kind of mental actually, state. You can't control what your body feels, right? No, but here's but here's what I is is my the saying which has become my best friend through a lot of um, emotional that uh, you know upheaval, if you will, mm -hmm. is that your feelings are true to you, but they are not always reality. Right. Just you. because you feel a certain way about yourself or about someone or about a situation, yeah. that's t that's true because you're feeling it, but it doesn't mean mm. it's actually real. Or that's what everyone else thinks. Yeah. Right. And and that to me is is really, really important. And I have to continuously remind myself of that because I will go down a hole where I'm like, I'm a piece of shit. Everyone about, hates me. How about do you believe in the saying that we're not our thoughts? Uh, no, not necessarily because I think so much of our personality is within our thoughts. So you're saying that you're not... What you but think. we are actually not what we think. Well, I mean, now we're getting into a really <laughs> deep thing. Yeah, like, are we actually connected to our bodies? Because if we are, no, tell we me... are not our bodies, and we are not our minds. No, we're like, not our bodies. I would say we're more our mind than our body, because you know what's going. You kind of know what's going on up there. But if, if I told you what, tell me you what your spleen is doing right now. I don't you, know. You'd be like, I don't know. what is my spleen I'm not doing? My body. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I couldn't tell you when I'm taking the next dump. Wow, you guys, you, you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> Dancing with the stars, uh, pros do health. poop. Mental health and poop. I think it's uh, you know, I think the f no kind of seeing what you've been, you know, reading what's been Meditate. going on with you and like <laughs> seeing what's been going Wait, on. And I've been checking in on this. you. I know you have actually. Thank you for that, and thank you for asking. You've been really good with like being compassionate about my situation as being sober and if I had enough support. Do you have concerns about relapsing through this process? I, it's like that fuck it attitude, right? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. But I would hate myself if I did. And I've done so much work for the last year and a half to really learn to, I'm not saying I love myself all of a sudden, but I at least like myself. Yeah. And I at least like to be, and I respect myself slowly because every day that I am sober, it really makes me proud of myself. Yeah. Right? But know this though, if you do relapse, you haven't lost anything. And a lot of people feel like they have. I've lost my own self-respect. But, but you don't discredit the work that you did prior to that relapse. I couldn't do it. 
But this is the perfectionism. Yeah. But I'm in the same. Yeah. But like one of the, one of the reasons why I've never, I don't think I've ever relapsed is because of that, right? Because because you know what? I'm proud of the fact that I've done this for as long as but I is have. Is that a bad thing? No, no. But I think it's but managing. Just forgiving yourself. For it's it's managing the ego, because ultimately, you know, twelve steps in recovery. Trying to be through it's, God, right? It, well, it's an ego deflating process, mm. and you know, alcoholics and addicts will have the biggest. You know, they can be the biggest victim and the biggest egomaniac in and the same liars, moment. Yeah. But and for me, I think something that doesn't get spoken enough about in mental health um, is that every I feel like there's such a desire for people to run away from struggle. Hmm. And struggle is essential. Struggle, I can't get through step four to save my fucking life because I feel like that's a struggle. Well, it's a struggle, but struggle is essential for growth. And that's what Absolutely. people forget. And people want to have this life void of struggle. They want to, when you go, okay, so paint me your perfect picture of life, they're like, I want to have a mansion and a billion dollars and da 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 because they think it, their life will be kind of void, you know, devoid of uh, struggle. And mm. but struggle gives purpose, and struggle is what creates goals. Right, right. You and know? failure is success. Yeah. In a, yeah, yeah. But it's so much easier said than done, right? I mean, well, like, no it, one wants to struggle. But but I. But what is your definition of struggle? Exactly. Are you drowning currently in the middle of the ocean? Or, or are, are you drowning in so much cash? but you're miserable because you have to buy your friends. Yeah, that's why the struggle is so unique to everyone. You know, yeah. a lot of, you know, I think a lot of what we see, you know, plastered across the news, plastered across everywhere, it's because people are creating struggle to Within find themselves. purpose. Yeah, and, yeah, and, they define, especially yeah. in society in America. Yeah. Because like I was just saying, talking to somebody about this, like how we, if we're not stressed or we're not busy, like meaning like we have no time for anybody let alone ourselves we are not successful no busyness and stress defines success here yeah my dad works his ass off my mom can't not work have they ever taken a sabbatical for like a year my dad did once back in the early 90s and and it was a very short-lived sabbatical it was like maybe a year because there's no they, they, i think people define their jobs with purpose yes. right yes Yes. Like, this is why my stepdad refuses to retire from being a dentist. Yeah. Even he'll die in someone's mouth doing a root canal. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, he's had COVID 75 times. <laughs> and he just refuses to stop working. You're never going to bring me down. What was it like for you growing up? What was your childhood like? Like, other than the obvious with the Osbournes, but that is very important to mention. Yeah, it would, you know, it was, there was a lot of inconsistency. There was a lot of travel. There was a lot of getting pulled out of school. In England, you have breaks from school every six weeks. They call it half term. Stop. Yeah. What so do you do for how long? Just a week. Oh. It's basically like a mental health kind of thing that oh, they do. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's great. That basically. Really? Yeah. They're it's, a yeah. Far in advance. And well, no, they're not time. really, but um, right. it, it, it's a uh, you know England is very much like a vacation society. Everyone works for vacations there. Yeah, they. Just... And it's great. I was constantly traveling with my dad. Never in one. You know, I lived in probably twenty something houses growing up and. You know, some here, some in England, and it was, was that confusing. Yeah, it was, and I, you know, I, I had a lot of nannies and inconsistent. I think would be the friends. Friends, I still actually have some of my friends from when I was that oh, age. Oh yeah. Yep. The toughest thing was probably just not having solid roots in any mm. one place, other than with my family. And being raised by nannies, like as I was, but yeah. I couldn't imagine multiple. I only had one or yeah. two technically, but. Um, was that confusing for you? Um, no, we, but I think the toughest thing was you would get an, you would develop an attachment to a nanny and then they'd be gone. Right. You know, and that was always that was tough. That's why for myself, you know, my kids have had the same nanny. How did you meet your fiance? I met her on a dating app. Stop. Yeah. Listen, yeah. I refuse. I refuse with a capital R E F U S E. I can spell. To do a dating app. I had great success on uh, with with the dating app, but like with Ari, like honestly, she's like my best friend. Is she sober? Uh, no, but she doesn't drink. Oh, she's just not. She's a total cool. normie. Um, you know, we met first time we went on a date. It lasted like eight hours. Wow. Yeah. That it was coffee. Like, How many coffees? No, have? we went on like actual dinner date. Oh. Um, and um, I broke my own rule, but we oh. uh, yeah we hung out for like seven eight hours didn't even kiss her and how much how long were you single before you started dating uh, swiping oh i started swiping that. like three i like probably three months after Ooh, okay was that a little like fresh or you felt like it was ready at the time this time oh i was i think i was just i was just ready for yeah. me it was I, but then again i think it, 
I think oh, my I therapist would, would have said you're yeah. not ready, but yeah. um, I, but then again, I, just, I did I it anyway. A few opinions. <laughs> yeah, and you know, but there's no there's no hard rules for any of this. Right, exactly. Do what you feel is right. I think you're going to be okay though. Yeah, like I'll honestly, be fine. you you meet enough Me people dog, in your we're job. Fine. I'm not saying that you would date a dance partner. You mean? But I'm saying like the there's lots of history in that ballroom. Oh yeah, there is, and scandal. <laughs> and scandal. <laughs> Too bad we can't write a book and flee the country. <laughs> or can we? I'm kidding. Now, for you, yeah, okay. just out of curiosity, what for you was like when you were deciding to, mm -hmm. when you were deciding to have a committed relationship and and marry, what were the things for you that you were like, oh, this ticks those boxes that now make it marriageable, if that makes sense? The honest, like, non-infidelity, like, knowing that he would never cheat on me. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, but it was someone that you felt that... I felt comfortable and safe with at that time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a bit And like... then the lying, like, what for me is, like, the whole thing with my mental health at the moment. I just need to learn to really trust myself mm -hmm. and my body and what it's telling me. But also don't overthink this process. And... That's definitely something I'm doing, and it's really hard... To because you are, not to. you are not, you are not going to be healed overnight. You are no, not going to be know. healed. There's no. I'm rushing through it. And, but no. And then I'm also like, how dare me not listen to an online course about Brene Brown when, and then just have fun. Like I'm, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's like that. I mean, there's so. When much. are you marrying her? What time? Um, what? Where? Okay. When? How do I get there? Uh, <laughs> like, Ari and I, I are order. probably going to get married. Um, wait, when's this airing? First by the of way? all, exactly. Don't say it. Okay, so Ari and I are going to get married next summer because Is we're having a baby eight? in July. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. You little horn dog. I know. That's Look good that. for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Boy, girl, girl. don't know. Twins? No, just uh, I'm gonna just a girl, single you girl. You are just so blessed with all these beautiful all girls. All I do is make girls. Are you trying it, to secretly make a boy? Uh, it would be great, but I, I kind of really like having little girls. I think right? it's great. Yeah. They're awesome. They love your. They love dads. Totally. And I'm re and I'm. And you're I'm, a great dad. I'm an okay girl dad, I think. That's amazing. Is that her first kid? It is her first kid. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. What Great my formula. advice for you, Cheryl, is okay. Don't date. I'm not ready yet. Don't no, no, no. Say okay, it. so when you are ready and you do, if if you do go down the dating app yeah. road, yeah. I would if you meet someone, you connect with them on the dating app, you start communicating on the app, and then you move to text. Don't Move to Texas? No, move to the text oh, from the app. Gee, you know. That's fast. Um, <laughs> no, don't go on a date with anyone. Um, Unless I would, here's my three three steps to going on a date. Just stop! You're giving me so no. much anxiety. Um, face have a FaceTime conversation with them before. Right. Make you, sure they're real. Make sure they are who and what they look like. They say they look like. Then go get a cup of coffee. Don't go on a full date. And then hire a PI. Well, you can do that too. Um, but if you're going to get a cup of coffee, there's no. Com it's it right, could be no 30 minutes right. or it could be three hours. I know what you should be a love matchmaker. Uh, I really should. You and Patty Stanger should team mm. up.